Hello and good evening. And you're joining me now for what is my second live stream um, on my channel. Uh, if you are brand new to my channel, then I am Andy and I'm a photographer. And in this stream, I'm going to be going through some uh, photos, particularly some of my much older shots that I've done and ones that... Um, uh, certainly, I would argue are not very uh, not very good, but with a few little tweaks in Lightroom and in Photoshop, um, hopefully can become something that's a little bit better. Um, if you are not new to my channel, then hello, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining. Um, do let me know how everyone is doing on this Sunday evening or Sunday morning or um, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Let me know how I look. Let me know how I sound. Um, uh, again, second live stream. Um, OBS is not the easiest software to work with um, and trying to uh, make sure that I look and sound okay is uh, critical. So uh, yeah, let me know how that's looking in the comments. I am vaguely keeping an eye on them over here. iPad for comments over here, computer for editing over here. Um, but yeah, um, I thought this would be um, quite fun to go through because it's the sort of thing that I get asked fairly often with people who are, um, you know, they've maybe got these catalogues of old photos. Most photographers or even non-photographers will probably have these catalogues of photos going back years that they took either on old point-and-shoot cameras or maybe on when they first started getting camera phones um and you know they, they take these snaps and you you think okay yeah it's a decent snap and you like it at the time but years later that picture might just sit on your phone because you look back at it and think yeah it doesn't really have the sort of the pop that you might want for photos that you might want to put on your wall or um you know you don't even want to post to instagram so and there's plenty of ways that you can jazz up these photos, whether it is just by one click hitting a preset or whether it's by doing something a little bit more um, in depth. And I'm gonna be showing a little bit of both. Some of these are gonna be pretty quick, just like a few clickety clicks, better photo, hopefully better photo. Some of them might be a little bit more um, involved. We'll take them over to Photoshop and try and spend a little bit more time working on them to make them look a little bit better gonna quickly uh, dive into the comments um, hair is looking uh, and then there's three pictures of fire um, so that sounds sounds like a good start uh, but it sounds like I'm uh, visible and it sounds like you can hear me my fear was that I go live and maybe you can see me but not hear me and I don't know how to go and fix it so as long as my mic is working big glug of water then I'm happy um, so why don't we have a quick dive into um, into Lightroom, and I'll just quickly take you through some of the shots that we're going to be having a look at today. Uh, so we'll start off with this one of a little butterfly um, in the Peak District. Now this was uh, taken a long time ago. Uh, where's my meta? 2002, apparently, according to the metadata. Um, so what was that? What are we now? 2020. So um, yeah, uh, at least 18 years ago. Um, actually, it says it was taken on 30th of the 1st, 2002. It definitely wasn't because that's my birthday. And uh, this was taken in midsummer when I was on a walk with some friends. So um, the date's wrong on that. But it's, it's old. Let's just say it's old. Um, some boats that I found in Ireland. Um, we've got this walker. Uh, this picture of rocks, uh, a snap of a bird, another bit of a lake, um, a boat, a boat, some fog, some field and sky. Uh, friend Charlie, uh, friend of the of the channel, um, also Charles Salisbury Hair, he has his own channel, you should go and check that out. He's responsible for my hair, hopefully looking better this evening than it may have been uh, in the last um, couple of videos. Uh, we're not necessarily going to look at all of these um, because I don't know how long I'm going to be streaming for until everyone gets bored, re really. Um, but these are some ones that I picked out, and not all of them are necessarily terrible, but they they need a lot of work, and there are some things that we can do to liven these up. Um, this one is the one I've literally just added. I actually took this in uh, 2018. Uh, so this one does not fall in the category of 
old photos, um, but it is older. Um, yeah, so we're starting on the uh, on the butterfly. I think we probably will kick off with this. I might just give it a few minutes to um, uh, let people come in. If anyone is coming in, um, we've got a few people. We've got people like Danny uh, McNamara in the in the comments, who uh, is a name I'm, I recognise from uh, Outside Xbox and Outside Extra. Um, thanks to a friend of the show, Luke Westaway, for sending people over, um, who did so on his last stream as well. Uh, Shy Violet's in there. Nate Langson is in there. Charles is in there. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, we've got some good people on board. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I know you have a lot of choice and things to do on a Sunday evening, so the fact that you are joining me really does feel great, particularly in a week where obviously there's a big update that's dropped for Animal Crossing, and uh, I have spent probably 20 hours um, since Friday in that game. So, yeah, thanks for coming here. I'm going to keep on drinking whilst we're going on this because I've got that horrible dry mouth and then you get that sound where you can really tell that someone hasn't drunk enough water. Okay, let's kick off though because I've done enough chatting and enough talking about things and enough vaguely referencing Animal Crossing. One time I mentioned it. Uh, so let's, let's begin, let's dive in. Um, so this is a shot that originally was in my back in the day would have what you'd have considered a portfolio in there it was on my deviant art page if anyone here is uh, a deviant arter um i'm not anymore but i was at the time and it's a shot that i was pleased with because it was the first time i'd tried to do like macro wildlife and you know it's 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 fun you know there's a butterfly it's wings are out it looks quite uh quite magnificent but um it's not a great shot, and if we have a look at the detail, it's there's very, very little detail in this shot. There's a lot of noise going on. A um, couple of reasons. One, I took this on a a really old Fujifilm camera, uh, a point-and-shoot I had. I think it may have been the Fujifilm FinePix A202, um, which was like a two-megapixel uh, little little compact thing, which I started my... Uh, my photography on so um, it was a it was a good one to start with with um, but let's have a look at the details uh, yeah so I took this at ISO 400 which for modern cameras and even for camera phones ISO 400 is nothing but back back then you know anything above like the lowest ISO of like ISO 400 you'd start to get a lot of image noise coming in and certainly as we can see on this there's a lot of noise there's, there's very little detail on that butterfly, you know, on this back there, there's all these fine hairs, but you can't see it, it's just a mush. But that's okay. It doesn't mean that we can't turn it into something a little bit better. Um, and we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna start off by cropping in because that's always a really good way to try and transform your shots. Um, unfortunately, because we don't have loads of detail, we can't do a huge crop. We can't completely fill the frame with the butterfly because if we do then we've got even less detail and certainly if you wanted to print this up um it's going to be very very noticeable that you you've got uh, you haven't got much detail but i want to crop out see in this up here in this corner we've got all these um other thistle heads and they haven't opened up like we've got this one here and this one here which look a little bit more attractive these ones look a little bit closed a little bit dried out we've also got i think a fly up there I don't really want that in the shot, so I'm going to bring this down. I'm also going to rotate this um, a little bit and put the butterfly somewhere more around there, I think. Maybe just move it up slightly. So we're getting a little bit of this, the base of this uh, thistle in there, but that's okay. We can probably cope with that. Um, I think what we're going to do is just play around first with the exposure sliders because it's it's overall, it's it's not badly exposed um, it's fairly even overall if we have a look at the histogram it's peaking in the middle which means that you've got good uh, uh, a good exposure balance overall um, but I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit bring down those highlights a touch which is mostly just on that um, on this thistle here because it is quite blown out um, so if we just move that up and down uh, you can see what it's doing to that but it is also bringing back a little bit more uh, vibrancy on the butterfly's wings which looks nice uh shadows i don't really think i want to do much with i might actually drop them because if you notice up here it's a little bit flat and we're getting a lot of noise on the butterfly but if we bring them down 
just gives a little bit more contrast and a little bit more pop um, to it, which actually I think works quite well here. Uh, let's have a play around of our white balance. I think it might be a little on the greeny side, so we can just up that tint ever so slightly. Keep on going somewhere around there, and maybe bring the temperature down. Okay, look at before and after. It's not a huge shift. I may have overdone that tint a little bit, but you know, we're starting off. We're starting off subtle before we move into anything too uh, too major. Now, one of the things I might actually do at this point um, is just have a quick flick through the presets. Now, I'm going to be using presets on probably everything in here, but crucially, and I've said this before in some videos, but if you're new to presets. You may see on Instagram, and if you follow any other photographers, you'll get a lot of people saying, hey, buy my preset packs, and um, yeah, one click, and your images will look amazing. And a lot of the presets can look brilliant, but I would encourage you to never just do one click on a preset and then consider your image done. Like, I love using presets. They're a great way to find like inspiration for how you want to transform an image, but you should never just click and go. So instead, what I tend to do is sort of mouse over them and move through the presets, seeing what it does with that color balance, seeing how it changes things up, and then deciding, okay, maybe actually that's a different direction than I than I may have otherwise gone in. Um, but never just leave it as it is. It's a starting point that you should then go to and, and do more with afterwards. But um, they are great for inspiration. They're great for helping bring in some tones that maybe you wouldn't have considered doing. Maybe with this shot you might have wanted to warm it up, but then you find a preset that looks really great with cooler tones. And you think, hmm, you know what? Yeah, nice. We can we can go with that. Um, you know, I don't hate some of these ones actually. This one's a little bit too strong. They have it has a very strong look to it. Maybe you might look at that and go, oh actually I really, really like that um, that style, but it doesn't really work for me particularly, certainly not in not in this shot. Um, but I don't like, I don't dislike this this P4 raw. Let's keep on having a little flick through some of the others. Do, 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 do. I have still got the Animal Crossing theme stuck in my head because uh, I was playing it just before, uh, just before I started this. Do, 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 do. Okay, I keep coming back to. I think maybe this P5 I actually quite like, but I'm going to apply it and then we're going to go back in and adjust. Play with that slide a little bit, see what our temperature slide is doing. It's giving it a little bit more of a filmic look here, slightly desaturated tellers, tellers? colors. Those greens have been uh, have been brought down a little bit and I um, actually quite like what it's doing because it's not, crucially, it's not getting rid of any of the orange um, on that butterfly, it's standing out uh, quite strongly. So. I think that's pretty good. And what we can do is then go into the hues and the saturation of the luminance and just start tweaking those a bit more. If you grab the orange hue slider, you can change the color completely of the oranges, which obviously we don't want to do because we know what color that butterfly should be and it shouldn't be a sickly green, nor should it be hot pink. Um, so let's put that back somewhere in the middle around there. Uh, the yellow, there's a lot of yellow in the background. Um, okay, I'm gonna keep that around there giving us a, this greeny tone. Actually, the greens I'm going to pull right down because that's then giving us more of a yellowy background, which I think actually looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to up the saturation a little bit. Same on those yellows. Maybe bring it, no, not bring it down. But a great way of working and in fact, this is a way that I almost always work when I'm doing any uh, Lightroom editing, is basically buggering about with the sliders until you figure out what it is you want to do. With each one, I almost never tend to grab it and then move it down. I tend to grab it and go, okay, what's it look like at either end of the scale? That's what tells you exactly what that slider is going to do, because you might not know exactly what it's going to affect. So you grab it and bring it down. Obviously, we've done shadows already. But already I think we're starting to get a, a better overall look to this shot. Um, what I'm going to do next though is I'm going to use a, a, a local adjustments brush and we're going to paint in some different uh, effects. I'm going to slightly up my contrast. I'm also going to slightly bring up the clarity and some texture. 
and we're going to paint that onto the butterfly itself and if we press show the mask we can see that we're then painting in that effect and this is going to hopefully allow us just to make those details on the butterfly pop out just a little bit more uh, but without just adding clarity to the whole scene and everything would start looking really crunchy and uh, and, and very very weird so we don't want that so let's do that turn off the view mask so we can see what's happening and then we can see again if we bring up the clarity it goes too crunchy we don't want it too much but a little bit and bringing up that texture you can see it starts to sharpen the butterfly a little bit some of those details become a bit more apparent now we don't have lots of detail to begin with so if you push that too far it'll start to look very very weird we'll start to get lots of artifacts if we zoom in um, things aren't looking good there so we want to use these tools sparingly if this was a, a macro shot that I'd done uh, with a, a proper macro lens and we had loads of fine detail adding in that texture can be a really great way of boosting the texture but we don't want to overuse it here what about a bit of dehaze what's that gonna do only a little bit let's just use plus 10 we can maybe bring those highlights up see what those shadows are doing maybe bring those down just a little bit and maybe up the whites as well again just helping it pop off the page that little bit more uh, if we turn that uh, that brush that we've done off and then back on we can see that it's added a lot of contrast a lot of pop to the butterfly which I think looks pretty good um, so we move back out uh, and from uh, before and after Again, we've gone for a, very, a much more desaturated look. We've got these warmer, um, excuse me, more muted greens in the background, which has taken it uh, in quite a different direction from the original. So maybe that isn't what you want to do, but it's a good example of how you can give old photos a completely different look from what they originally had, which may fit really well. You know, I could see that being a nice, maybe even a one-to-one -one crop printed in a small frame. Maybe something you'd have in your bathroom. Um, you know, something like that I think looks quite nice. And because we've got those muted greens in the background, the butterfly really pops off the screen in a way that maybe it didn't quite so much before. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that overall, actually. Um, uh, so why don't we move on to something else? And let's just go uh, to... Let's just keep going in order for now. So this is one... As the name suggests up here, Ireland. Uh, I took this on holiday in Ireland um, back in, when was this, 2002. Was that really 2002? Was that 18 years ago? Maybe. I mean, it's what it says. No, I think I was 16 when I went, so. Maybe this was 2004. Unless I'm getting my dates wrong. Uh, Nate was with me, and he's in the comments, so maybe he can tell me... Uh, uh, maybe he can tell me exactly when this was. But anyway, so this is a JPEG, as was the previous one. And when you're shooting in JPEG, you do have less control because uh, if you're shooting in RAW, then you can completely change your white balance. You've usually got a little bit more detail in the highlights and in the shadows, which just lets you do more editing in post. Um, so if you are keen on your photography and you want to craft more artful images rather than just like quick snaps for Facebook I would suggest shooting in raw wherever possible and I know that when I bought my first uh, my first DSLR uh, which is a Canon 350D uh, when I was I think 17 18 um, from then on I always shot everything in raw and I'm glad I did because it means that every other shot in this that I took on that you know this one in 2005 I oh, know wait this one is a JPEG bad example that one's JPEG 2 that one's JPEG 2 that one's JPEG okay some of them are raw. Um, yeah, 2006 onwards, let's say, is when I started apparently shooting everything in raw. Um, so anyway, raw is good, gives you a little bit more flexibility. It means that when you're looking back at your old catalog of images and you want to try doing something different with them, if you've got those raw files, it gives you a lot more scope to do some processing. Because this is a JPEG, and also it's not a very high resolution JPEG, and it means that if we zoom in, there's a lot of mushy details in this. There's really, there's not a lot of information. There's not a lot that we're gonna be able to do, but it looks good enough just on this screen here. And again, for a print that's maybe like, I don't know, a four by six, six by eight or something that you might want, that's probably gonna be enough resolution. Um, looking at the details, uh, aperture of f3.2, ISO 400, again, using 
quite high ISO speeds for uh, for the cameras that I was I was on. I'm not sure why I was doing that. Likely I was just shooting in full automatic, and that's what the camera that's what the camera spat out. So first of all, I can see that this needs a new crop. It's on a slant. Uh, it shouldn't be on a slant. Uh, so let's line it up and. I don't want to make it straight along this line of where the riverbank goes or the, the, the bank of this lake uh, because that's sort of going away from the camera so it shouldn't be straight. Instead I want to try and straighten it up vaguely uh, in line with these uh, reeds and I think something like that, I am just eyeballing this, it's not an accurate way of doing it, but that I think looks about right, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more like that looks uh, yeah it looks pretty decent um, and I might actually adjust the crop because I think what we could do if I unlock this and we're gonna go for a non-standard crop there's a lot of sort of plain empty water down here which isn't really adding anything to the shot and that's an important thing to think about if you're if you're trying to in fact whether you're trying to liven up old photos or you're trying to get the best out of photos you have taken properly thinking about how you want to crop your images is a really strong way of of improving them because I know that I don't need all of this empty water down here. There's nothing going on. There's a lot of sort of uh, mossy, sludgy stuff going on. So by bringing that up, we're just removing it from the scene. Same with the sky. We don't need as much. So I'm using a slightly narrower uh, crop, which I think looks good. It's slightly more applying to the rule of thirds um, with this line following just the top of those uh, of those reeds there um, and we've got the boat in this third uh, section here so I think already that is looking uh, like a slightly better crop for this image um, again let's start off by going through some of these these presets because I think that's going to be a good starting point for this shot to decide where we want to take it um, because I don't think these like these warmer tones like this really work for me. Actually these blue these blue tones that actually that does that does look pretty nice. A7 looks pretty nice. Ooh, A8. Yeah, I actually really like A8. Oh no, A9. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay, let's go with um let's go with that. I'm not going to go through the rest because it'll just waste time and you don't care. Let's uh just check in very quickly. Uh yeah, lots of people in the chat. Hello, we've got Pete. Nate is still there. Oh, and Luke has joined. Hey, Luke. Hope you're well. Uh, Nate says 2002 sounds about right for our island holiday. Okay, maybe it was. It was a good trip. We went backpacking, and um, I was far too young to be drinking Guinness, but drink Guinness I did. Right. Let's um, drop in a graduated filter. Now, this I've shown before, but it's uh, it's a very, very important tool if you want to do uh, take control of your skies or bring focus to certain areas. So what this does, let's just show the mask, is allow you to apply a mask to uh, half of your scene. You drag in this filter, and everywhere that's pink is where the filter is going to be applying. Everywhere it isn't, it isn't applying. So it's great for skies because it means that you can drag this down and you can then make adjustments that's only going to affect this top part of the scene where the sky is. It is affecting the mountain and there are some things we, we, we could maybe do about that but I don't really think we need to for this shot. So let's turn off that mask. Firstly I'm going to darken it because we've got this cool uh, cloud detail going on and I want to try and bring that out a little bit more. Uh, what about upping the contrast? Just a, just a little bit, plus 20. That clarity. Sometimes clarity is uh, is really great for bringing out cloud detail, and there are some of these shots later where I'm going to be using that again and again until you're sick of it. But I don't want to overuse it too much here because it's adding in a lot of noise and making that sky look very, very uh, grainy and low resolution. So I'm not going to go overboard, but I'm going to also bring in a little bit of dehaze. And as we do, you can see that it's darkening these patches. We're getting a lot more punch from those clouds. I'm not going to darken it with the exposure quite as much, so I'm going to bring that back up. Okay. There is a lot of noise. Maybe I could try adding in some denoise on that filter. That's helping a little bit. Okay. So that started off well, but let's put another one in. Uh, but this one I'm only going to be using a, a, a darker exposure. I'm going to bring it in from the bottom, just darkening that bottom bit of water. 
which hopefully is just going to draw the eye more towards the middle of the scene where these boats are. So we just turn that off and on. We can see what we've done, and we've turned what is a or a, you know a fairly bland, lifeless scene. The white balance is a little bit uninspiring. The colours don't really have a lot of pop. And already we've started to bring out a lot more mood and a lot more life in this shot. And I think it's looking already pretty nice, cons especially considering we're working from a an 18-year-old JPEG taken on what would have been a pretty crappy camera. So, yeah, I think we're already coming to a good point here. Um, I'm just going to try and add in another type of filter. This one's called the radial filter. Let's just reset it. And this time we're working with circles. Um, and so you can drag in the circle, you can make it as big or as small as you want, and I'm going to vaguely drag it over these boats because I want to just try and lighten up the area around those boats, including the boats. Um, you can control the feather, which is important, because if you have no feather at all and you see that there's a very, very hard distinctive line between where, between where your filter is and where it isn't. So if you lighten up, let's just turn that off you up the exposure then suddenly you've got this uh, this very uh, visible circle of where you've applied that filter and where you haven't looks ridiculous so go back onto that make it active we don't want to brighten it up that much anyway we want maybe just a little touch and maybe a little bit in the shadows a little, little bit less bring down those highlights maybe a little bit of clarity as well which is just going to help those boats be the focus of the scene but again our fit our feather is really really bad I'm gonna go all the way to the other way which is gonna uh, make it very very soft as we can see there's now this very very soft blend between where our filter is applying right in the middle and then it feathers out towards the edge makes it uh, hopefully like that basically invisible uh, that you've done anything you know you wouldn't necessarily look at that and say oh I can see that there's a radial filter been applied uh, so I think we're yeah we're in a good spot there the last thing that I want to do um, with this shot I think the last thing anyway is just go around and neaten it up uh, with some of these objects that are floating around because it looks a little bit messy to my eye and Lightroom has a spot removal tool up here and it will allow you to just go around and click on these different things and Lightroom will find a different area and take them out. And I think that's going to be pretty important. Oh, not that one because that's got the boat reflection so we don't want to do that. Things like this, is, I don't know what these are. I think they might be, um, I don't know, maybe bits of leaf or it's not rubbish. It was it was a very clean lake. It may even be bird feathers or, or um, I don't know. I don't know what it was. Anyway, but there's a lot of these just white bits and also this uh, yellow boy um, over here, which again, we can get rid of uh, if we just turn it off and we can see that, you know, we've started to, by taking those out, it's just neatening the scene enough that, um, uh, you know, the, these these tiny little specks don't draw the eye in quite the same way, which... Um, is important. It's difficult to do on a shot that's so low resolution because Lightroom doesn't have loads of information to, to work with. If you are doing this level of post-processing where you're going in and really fixing fine details, you need a high resolution image. That's why if I do uh, um, like really high-end product stuff, like I want to be working with 40 megapixel plus images because that's when you've got loads of detail. This is a tiny, tiny image. Um, so, you know, we can only do so much. Um, someone's commented with uh, time for work, boys. Se secret agent, Sa secret agent Sam. It is time for work, boys, or it was time for work, boys, but now we've removed the boy, so it is uh, time for rest, boys. Um, boys, spelled like boy. It was a clever joke. Uh, okay, I think that's probably everything I'm, I'm going to do on this shot. And I'm I'm pleased with it, with how it looks. And let me know kind of what you think in the in the comments. Because as I say, I don't want to go overboard certainly with these shots because they are old. They don't have much resolution. There's not loads we can do without just ruining the shot. But I think the the shift that we've got in the color balance, and 
I don't. You know, I haven't done anything with the exposure. Let's just actually do a bit more because bringing that shadow down. Okay, yeah, that's working for me a lot more. Really darkening that. Maybe boosting those whites a little bit. I just realized we haven't done anything with this. The contrast might drop a little bit. Clarity, no, 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 no. It gets too crunchy. Can't put clarity on something that's so low res already. Flick back and forth, see where we're getting to. It's looking all right. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe drop the vibrance by minus five to slightly take out the edge of some of those colors. Yeah, this is coming. This is coming on more and more. Yeah, I like it. Okay, a bit more water. Keep hydrated, you guys. Also got a Fox's Classic bar, ready to go just for when I need a little bit. Uh, need a little bit of sugar. These are great chocolate bars. Fox's, only the best. Um, where did I get to? I don't know. I got distracted by biscuits. Uh, not for the first time in my life. What we could maybe try doing is just doing a little bit of split toning. This allows you to put different color tones in the shadows versus the highlights, and it could be a really, really nice move. Let's bring those shadows to a blue point and just see what happens if we start to add in some of that blue. Maybe not that much. What about a bit of highlights? Okay. Move it around. Something like that, maybe. Turn that off and on. That is very subtle. I'm not sure if, certainly with the compression from a YouTube live stream, you're going to be able to see exactly what that's done. But I really like what that has done. It is it is a small change, but often how I work tends to be with quite small changes, but lots of them that over the whole editing process adds up to a pretty, uh, hopefully, a pretty good looking image. Um, <laughs> Nate says, uh, Fox is classic, do not taunt. Well, Nate, you need to get yourself some packs of classics. Uh, oh, uh, people are asking maybe if um, uh, if phones, how good are smartphone camera? Matt's, Matt SQL says, how good are smartphone camera images for editing? Do you have to turn off the post-processing, etc., for it to be worth editing them? Um, no, it's a good question, actually, because I, I shoot, for the most part, my, my standard phone is, the, uh, is an iPhone. Um, and if you just take a normal iPhone photo, the HDR tools are amazing for like keeping bright skies under control, for lightening shadows. And so often, if you are taking quite a high dynamic range scene, shoot in the normal camera mode and that will help get you as much detail as possible. Whereas if you used an app like Moment, which I use uh, if I want to take a raw photo, it won't balance those out as much. I mean, you're gonna have to do a lot more work to bring, excuse me, bring those back in. Um, but iPhone cameras, in fact, all modern smartphone cameras are significantly better than what you're seeing on screen now. Um, so if I can edit like this on a on a 18 year old JPEG, then you can do some amazing stuff with uh, today's uh, camera phones. Um, if you do have the option of shooting in RAW and you uh, the scene allows for it, you haven't got too much uh, uh, too many bright skies or really dark shadows then then do and give it a try and work work with those um yeah iphone cameras are amazing i shoot them all the time i've i've published work that i've taken on iphones i've submitted competition work um which has been shot on iphones so yeah you can do some really really good stuff um i think i'm done on this shot though i don't know what you guys think um maybe i could keep tweaking but i think i've done as much as i want um in this shot um, I really like the the tones we've got from what was a a yellowy sickly green we've brought that a, a deeper richer tone um, I like now we've got a bit more separation um, particularly on the uh, the reeds we we've now got much more of a defined yellowy orange for the stems of the reeds versus the leaves on the top it also allows the boats to pop out a little bit more um, yeah, I, I love this shot now. Um, it was a shot that I kind of liked at the time, but forgot about. It sat in a, um, it, it just sat on a hard drive with me doing nothing with it for some time. But yeah, I like that a lot. Um, very pleased. So yeah, let me know what you let me know what you think. Uh, love how the boats pop. Says secret seek. Oh, secret agent. It's secret. Of course, it's see it's secret agent Sam. I am a buffoon. Uh, 
Yes, love how the boats pop. Anyway, says Sam. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I think it's. Um, I think they've come out pretty well. Um, so why don't we move on to uh, a different one? I'm going to skip forwards a few, and I'm just going to do a, a, a much quicker one on this uh, this bird because having a look at it, it's a nice snap of a bird, sort of thing you might get if you were having a picnic on a bench and you just took a quick snap, but it's a bit dark and you may want to just make it pop out a little bit more if you wanted to share it on Instagram or Facebook. So let's start at the top. We're going to start with a new crop because again, we've got a lot of dead space. It's sort of fallen into, uh, into nothing a little bit. So let's bring this down to about here. I'm going to put it in the right thirds of the frame. Press enter and we've applied that crop. And again, this is an old JPEG. We don't have a lot of resolution. Zooming in, I don't even think that bird is properly in focus. So we can't do loads, but we can do a bit. Let's first of all really bring up that exposure by a whole stop. Maybe even bring up those shadows. Actually, no, let's just leave the shadows where they were. The whites is going to help things pop a little bit. There's highlights as well. I'm going to bring up a little bit before and after just bringing up that exposure has made a huge difference to what this shot looks like. Um, the rest of my edits for this though, I think I'm gonna use, again, I'm gonna use that adjustment brush because I wanna apply my edits specifically to uh, the bird and not to the rest of the scene. So I'm gonna turn on the view mask by clicking this little tab down here and I'm going to paint in the mask on top of the bird. And what this is gonna be, again, if you're not familiar with masks, I'm basically telling Lightroom that everywhere that I am painting pink is where I want to apply a certain change. Uh, so I turn it off, which now means, you know, we can ramp up, we can do what we want, and it's only applying to the bird. So we can turn it from ridiculous to just as ridiculous, but we don't want to do either of those things. I do want to up the exposure a little bit. Uh, I might even up those highlights boost those whites and we are going to bring in a bit of clarity and we're going to up that texture just going to make some of those details on that bird pop out a little bit more there's a lot of fine feathers going on that I want to stand out because it was a little bit ruffled because it's a, it was a very wet day so when it landed it was a little bit um, slightly waterlogged um, I suppose and I kind of want that to come across in a way that it didn't uh, before and I think that's already looking a lot better again if we zoom in I don't I don't know whether it's my focus or what was my shutter speed for this an 80th of a second handheld um, yeah th like there's definitely some motion blur going on here because this is uh, when was this 2006 14 years so yeah this is way before image stabilized lenses or uh, image stabilized camera bodies so yeah, that, that was far too slow a shutter speed. I've obviously done that because it was very, very dark. That's why I also ISO 400. So again, these cameras can't really deal with uh, low ISO. So there's a lot of image noise, even ISO 400. And it's meant that as a result, our image before was very, very dark. Um, so I think we've done a lot to bring that up there. I think we could maybe stand to warm it ever so slightly, just plus four. And... I think as well. Let's just have a look at our, our hues. Because those greens, I think we could push them to a little bit more of an emerald green rather than yellowy green. Because if we go yellowy, then it starts to blend a little bit with the bird. Because obviously the bird itself is yellowy and brown. Whereas if we bring those greens into the green, it stands out a lot more. We've got that nice summery, vibrant colors going on. But they're a little bit vibrant. They're a little bit... Uh, luminous right now so I'm going to bring the saturation down a little bit maybe even the luminance actually no let's bring the luminance up which is also going to help desaturate because lighter colors are less saturated than darker colors so um, that has helped I'm also going to bring it out a little bit more I'm going to bring the saturation up on the yellows just a little bit and maybe a little bit on the orange or maybe a little bit less no a little bit up you know what if I can't decide leave it in the middle it's probably fine um so yeah i think a very a few quick edits is all that's needed to change this shot and to make it uh, a much better looking um snap it is still a snap there's no question you know this is not a this is not a a portfolio image this is not a uh, an awards submission 
uh, but it isn't just a nice snap of a bird when I was sitting at a, at a picnic bench in Scotland. Um, but because of the low resolution, because of the uh, the fact that it isn't properly in focus, there's very little more that I would want to do on this to try and bring it out. But we've come from a position of it being so dark that you can barely really tell that it's a bird. Suddenly we've made it a lot brighter, a lot more vibrant, the bird stood out. Um, and a lot of that is being done from this uh, from this adjustment tool. So if you are if you've done stuff in Lightroom before and you haven't used adjustment brushes, these tools up here, they are the one thing that I would suggest diving into and playing around with because when I started working more with local adjustments rather than making edits that affected the entirety of the image, it completely transformed how I edited. If we just turn it off and on, you can just see how much of, an, of a change that has made on the bird. Those details are popping out. Um, you know, there's such a, a difference between those, the highlights on those feathers and the darker feathers beneath. Um, yeah, it makes a huge difference, huge difference. Um, there's also probably plenty of things that we could do on here to um, uh, affect the, uh, the noise. So maybe have a look. In fact, because I haven't uh, enabled profile corrections or chromatic aberration, although I didn't really see a lot of uh, aberration in here, but there is noise. So maybe before I move on, let's just go to our noise reduction and detail panel. There's a lot of color noise, so maybe if we bring that up a little bit. Yeah, that's going to come out a little bit. And a little bit of noise reduction. But the problem that we have on this shot is that there's so much fine detail on the bird that if we bring that noise reduction up, it's going to reduce that detail on the bird even further. So, for example, up here, look, the bird's blurry. We don't want that. So, actually, I'm going to keep the noise reduction basically to zero. Now, if you really wanted to do more with this shot, you could take it into Photoshop and you could apply noise reduction uh, to the background but not the bird. I can't be bothered because it's not that good a shot that it really warrants spending your time in looking at. So I'm just going to consider that done. Hopefully you like that little bit of um, little bit of bird. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a dip into the comments at this point. Um, is anyone complimenting my hair? I don't know. I hope so. Uh, Matt Siegel says, cute fluffy tummy bird is actually, yeah, very fluffy. I do kind of just want to go stroke it a little bit. I did once uh, rent a barn owl and I loved stroking the front um, of that happy little barn owl, uh, which is good. Um, people are talking about uh, the bird being angry. Pete says the bird looks slightly uh, unhappy. Um, and Danny McNamara says, yes, it's probably fed up of posing for Christmas cards. Yeah, maybe it is. Is this actually a robin? I know it's got a slightly red front, but I'm not sure if it is a robin. Um, I thought it might be a sparrow. I don't know. Um, I'm usually better on birds than this. Anyway, let's move on. Let's do something a little bit, a little bit different. And let's go to this shot of friend Charles. Um, great hairdresser and apparently back in 2008 he was a uh, climber too. He still is a climber I believe. Was this really 2008? I thought this was earlier than 2008 because this was before I went to uni and I went to uni in 2007 so maybe maybe at some point I've re-exported this and it's changed the date I don't know. Anyway right let's do some things to this shot because I think we can play around and make this one a little bit more uh, a little bit more edited. Again we're going to start off with a crop. We're going to put Charlie here in the right thirds of the scene. We've got a completely white empty sky. We don't need to keep that because there's nothing in there to save. So why not make Charlie and the Rock the absolute focus of this scene? Uh, right we've got hugely blown out highlights. If we just have a look at our histogram and if we click on show highlight clipping is it not clipping? I don't know. Maybe it isn't. We've got a lot of... Okay, actually, no, we can bring back quite a, a good amount of, of detail in there. It's going to start looking weird against this rock. So let's just go down. Can you see this, this line? We've got this slight extra line. It just looks a little bit fake, a little bit off. Now that is, I think, a problem with chromatic aberration. And again, you can see it's almost like it's got a, a pencil-drawn outline on 
on Charlie's arm here and on this rock. So if we go down and turn on Remove Chromatic Aberration, it has done a lot to remove it. If we turn it off and on, it has removed it a, a, a good amount. It has not completely cleared it up, but uh, it's it's got us to a good starting point at least. Um, that blue, a good way of darkening down a blue sky, if you're careful with how you use it, is going into the hue saturation luminance. And luminance means brightness, so you bring a channel down, then uh, it should darken it down. So if we really bring this blue down, you can see it's suddenly bringing back that blue sky, which is amazing considering it looked like it was just empty and white. There actually is a lot of detail. And again, that's one of the benefits of shooting in RAW. This is a CR2 file, and even though this was taken on a uh, on a Canon 350D, which was when I bought it. I don't know what 14, 15 years ago um, was an entry level camera, and now does not take good. You know, it, it's worse than a phone. We're still getting amazing amount of detail out of out of this image. Um, I don't think I want to bring it down that much though. I think maybe around here, just so we've got like that hint of the blue sky, we can see some of those cloud details. But if you bring it down too much, it looks very very fake. Certainly that much, very very fake, and we start to get the problem with like you know the the transition between the rock and the sky. Things look weird, so we don't want to go down that far. Um, just a little bit like that, I think, really really helps. Okay, maybe we could even mess around with the hue a little bit, bring it down, it's a little bit purpley. That looks good. Okay, where were we? Shadows. I'm not going to do anything with the shadows right now because I like having, in fact, I'm going to bring them down and the whites I'm going to leave where they are. Contrast I'm going to leave where it is. Again, this is a shot that I'm going to use more local adjustments and most of those adjustments are going to be on poor old Charlie who I will point out did not agree to be part of this stream uh, I didn't ask him he's not being difficult or anything but he doesn't know that this picture is in here uh, and I thought to hell with it I'll do it anyway so if he minds if you mind Charlie then do put in the shot oh he's commented already great hair so he must be fine with it uh, which is good because what we're going to do now is we're going to go in and again using that adjustment brush paint in the mask over Charlie making the brush smaller when we get to more fine areas what you don't want to do is brush onto the background because then you'll be lightening your background and it's going to become very obvious that you've used these tools so we're going to go in we could even zoom just to make it a little bit easier and paint in around here we don't need too much on his boots a little bit here a bit more on his arms something like that um, again if you use a like I was talking about feathering with that radial tool feathering with this brush is important as well that line there is a little bit harsh so we can soften it up with a, f a more feathered brush as you see we brush in here it's less obvious what we've done uh, okay, turn that off, zoom back out, and now we can start to just bring up some of that light on Charlie. Um, I might end up doing two of these because I don't want to, you know, his outside on the on his leg around here is obviously, uh, that's where the sun is hitting, so it's brighter than his face, which being against the rock is very much in shadow. So it may be that I add a different brush specifically to his face, but we can see how this is going. The shadows obviously is making a huge difference. So let's bring those up, not too much. The whites a little bit. Bring down those highlights, particularly on his on his uh, leg here. And let's have a look. It's a bit much, I think. It's a little bit much. We turn that off. It is obvious that we've done this stuff. So let's just go back on it and maybe bring that exposure down. We've brought the shadows up, and I think that looks a lot better. Let's turn it off. Turn it off. Yeah, that's more subtle. That's more believable that maybe there's a, you know, that there is some sunlight hitting him from from, uh, from over here. Um, maybe even I might have used a, a flash or, or an LED light to, to um, to throw in some extra detail. Charlie's in the comments, he says, I do not mind if you can improve the look of my technique too, that would be great. 
Uh, Charlie, I think your um, I think your technique is good. Uh, uh, Pete says, if you have any photos of me with my ass pointing to the camera that you want to edit, then I mind. Uh, I do have plenty of those photos, I think, Pete, uh, and worse ones. Um, maybe that's for my next stream. We'll see how I feel. Okay, uh, Charlie's got a good concentration face. He's a very good climber. He's a very strong man. Let's brighten that up a little bit. But again, we don't want to do too much because as you can already see, there's a lot of image noise in here. So maybe actually just on this mask that we put in on his face, maybe we could try raising that denoise. And as you can see, some of that noise is falling out of his face. But as we are doing, we're losing a lot of detail. So I'm going to bring up the noise a little bit, but also bring up the sharpening. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't want to do that. Look, if you add a lot of sharpening, you get all of that. Obviously that's at max, so let's not touch with sharpening when we've got that much image noise going on. Let's leave it at that. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. We've done a lot to rescue that shot. I think it's looking pretty decent. But I think I'm gonna, let's take it over to Photoshop, because I just want to try one more little thing. That was quick. That's so quick. Should be, it's a very good PC. Um, <laughs> Secret Agent Sound says, no one likes a noisy face. It's true. That is true. We don't. It is time for me to just have a little nibble on this Fox's Classic because it's been teasing me for some time. Mmm. Oh, this is a good biscuit. One of my faves. It's got everything. It's got chocolate, lovely biscuit, cream filling in the middle. Champion. Right. Whenever I edit in Photoshop, the first thing I do is duplicate that layer. Because that means that whatever edits you do, whatever you change in that shot, you've always got that original background layer that you can come back to just in case you mess things up so bad that you don't know what to do anymore. And instead of just clicking on the undo button 140,000 times, you just go back to your background. It's great. Okay. So one of the things that I've come over here to do is I want to apply a... Um, a bit more of a lens flare up here in this corner. Now, normally I don't like applying lens flares digitally because more often than not they look fake. And if you don't already have a lens flare in your shop, then adding one in doesn't make sense. And I see them time and time again with people on Instagram who add in a lens flare, but they haven't considered how the light is really falling on a scene. And sometimes they've added it in a place where like the sun is clearly coming from a completely different direction, but they put a lens flare in just because it looks Instagrammy and cool, but it doesn't make sense in the scene. Whereas in this shot, we have already got a lens flare up here. We have got that natural flare. I just want to enhance it a little bit and see if we can make it a little bit more dramatic. And the way I'm going to do that is by using an action that I've got. And actions basically are kind of what they sound like. They're a series of uh, different edits that have basically been recorded and you just play them back and it makes those edits onto your image and you can buy these actions from people they will sell them photo you need to google photoshop actions there are thousands that you can that you can get uh, I got these from Flern because um, it's a great place to learn about photoshop and this one is a sun flare it is flare orange flare top left I spelt it wrong I spelt it aragni aragni flare top left and these are all the different things it does. So it, it makes a new layer, it fills it, it transforms it, it adds a blur, it adds more layers, it does hues and saturation, but it just goes through it. Um, so let's, let's just do that now. Let's click on that and we just click play. And then uh, add the blur. Uh, let's blur it exactly that amount. It's gonna do its thing. There we go, now we've got our flare, but like I was saying with presets, you don't want to apply a, uh, apply a thing, whether it's a preset, whether it's an action like this, and just leave it as it is. We're going to tweak it. I'm going to bring the opacity down because it's a little bit much, and then I'm going to press Ctrl and T to transform that flare. So now we can move it around. Obviously if we move it here, then suddenly you've got a square of orange in the middle of your shot it doesn't look very good so we're not going to do that obviously i'm good but i'm going to move it up and out of the way and i'm going to drag it a little bit this way a little bit this way just to make it blend a little bit more with the scene and i think that mm, 
what do I think? How do I feel about it? It's too much still. Let's bring it down, opacity down further. It needs to be subtle. It needs to just be like the suggestion of a summer sun ray kissing through the scene. It isn't a blast. It isn't that. It's this. It is somewhere under the 20% mark that's just adding in that touch of summer warmth, which I think that does really, really nicely. Great. Okay. Um, we're in a good place there. Uh, I think that looks good. I don't like how empty this sky is. What I might try, while we're adding things in digitally, again, something else I don't tend to do, but we'll add a layer, and I'm going to press B to bring up my brush tool. And in my brushes, I have got a bunch of um, uh, clouds that you can apply as brushes. Uh, these were made by Joel Grimes, Clouds and Skies. He is a very good photographer. Um, and these came with one of his education packs, I think. Um, or maybe I bought them. I can't remember. And as you can see, this is what that brush basically is. So if you just click when you get clouds. I don't want those ones, obviously. Um, but you can, if you've got an empty bit of blue sky, then you can use these to literally add in some cloud detail. And cloud detail is good. Empty blue skies might be great for a nice summery walk, but photography-wise, they're a little bit redundant. Um, you're not going to get a lot from them. So I don't want anything too big. I don't know what this one looks like. It looks a little bit small and out of the way, which is exactly what we want. Yeah, that's going to look good. So, okay, I'm going to undo that. And we're going to put this layer below our flare, because our flare will be on top, uh, is going to be, we don't want... We don't, don't want what I'm trying to say. I don't want the clouds above the flare because the flare is at the camera level. The clouds are in the background. So it wouldn't make sense for the cloud to appear over the top of the flare. That's how you would arrange your layers in Photoshop. So uh, we're going to just very subtly just do uh, even further. I'm just going to do that. One click with white. It's added in that cloud detail. Obviously, we've got this cloud here. So what I'm going to do is add in a, uh, a layer mask. A layer mask basically means that anything in that mask which is white reveals the image. Anything that is black hides it, which means I can just now uh, get a normal brush, something like this, in a larger size, something like that. Uh, and I can swap my colors over. So now I'm painting with black, I'm painting 100% opacity, and I can just paint with black onto that. Oh, come on. Can I use a clone stamp? I don't want to use a clone stamp. Oh, I see what you've been doing. Oh no, that's my fault. It's my fault for being a buffoon, not knowing how Photoshop works. Okay, here we go. General brushes, soft round brush, smaller size, there we go. <laughs> we got through it in the end, you guys. Okay, paint with black, and we literally just paint away that cloud where we don't want it. I don't want any of it down here. Um, so yeah, something like that. And the great thing is, is that if you made a mistake and you want to go back, when you just paint with white, and it puts it back. So it's not like deleting it. If you just erased that, then you're going to have to just start from the beginning, put the whole thing back in. You don't want to do that. Instead, you just paint with black. So layer masks are really, really powerful. So great thing to experiment with in Photoshop. If you haven't used them before, that is a great thing to do. And suddenly, uh, you can see we've now added in a little bit of cloud detail. It's made that sky more interesting. Uh, and it's, I think it's added a huge amount to the shot um, overall. It's, I think it's transformed it. We brought that blue sky back and we've got some cloud detail in there too. Uh, but we're not done. Uh, Shy Violet says, you can make clouds? Uh, and the answer is yes, you can make clouds. And that's how. Um, <laughs> Matt, Matt asks, can we add in an alien abduction ray from a UFO? You know what? Probably some better Photoshoppers than I could do that. Um, I'm not... Uh, I'm not really very good at anything that qualifies as digital art. Excuse me, digital art. Uh, I think I'm okay at retouching photos to a to a intermediate level. Um, even then, I'm not great. Right. Next thing we're going to do 
is eat my biscuit mm -mm -mm. Emily Price says it really balances out the photo thanks I think it does too because I think having that empty bit of sky there um, was just a little bit annoying for me and that isn't something I would do adding in cloud adding in things like that on uh, my work today and it isn't what I would do generally I don't like doing that but this is about how you can add in an extra little bit of life to your older photos in case you wanted to print them out as you know and sort of reinforce those those memories that you had and this is a this is a good tool uh, for doing that um, arguably it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit fake it's not quite to the level of completely replacing a sky and maybe putting in a putting in a sunset uh, sky behind it it's only adding in a little bit of a wispy cloud but still you know it's not it's not true photography it's arguably arguably a bit fake anyway next thing we're doing is we're going to go to layer merge visible and that is just going to put all our put it on the top layer come on there we go that's putting uh everything that we've just done onto a new layer now you could just flatten your image but by doing it this way it means that you can go back and make some edits to some previous ones uh, so what we're going to do though is go into filter and camera raw filter This is bringing up the exact same controls you would have in Lightroom. This effectively opens Lightroom inside Photoshop um, Crucially what that's going to mean for me uh, is that I can go to my presets That we didn't apply before because I wanted to make these other edits first and we can go through just as we did last time and mouse over them and decide what look we want to apply to this scene now some of my visco ones give really nice color graded filmic looks but some of these flern ones which um came with a flern subscription to their education channels they are very um they're quite extreme um they they make very very big changes and for the most part i don't like them but for the purposes of this, because we're doing some interesting edits, I'm going to at least flick through so you can see these are very, very vibrant things. And I actually think some of these beach ones might give a bit of a... a bit of a, a vibe of... I don't know, maybe you're climbing in California in the summer or... Um, you know, maybe even like Morocco or something rather than uh, the Peak District. Um, you know, I've not been to either of those places, so I'm making this up completely as I go along. But you know what I mean? You know, these earthy tones, these light things, there's not a lot of um, summery, you know, we've got all these greens going on in the background. Maybe not those ones. What about earth? Some of these, a little bit too strong. Okay. Film vibes. What have we got in film vibes? Ooh, dear, no. No, I don't like those. And we have ones called Male Blogger. Um, no. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not the Flynn ones then. The only one I did sort of like is the. Uh, go back to Beach. Let's have a look at Bohemian actually first, see what they look like. Yeah, I don't think any of those. Certainly not with what it's doing to the blue sky. Um, maybe this one. Light Marley. Um, Shy Violet says, Can confirm there are lots of rocks to climb in California. Yeah. So I've heard. Yeah, anyway, back to this. Um, we're going to go with Light Marley. And obviously this is a huge uh, change in the scene. If we turn it off and on, it's done a lot to... Uh, the rocks and a lot to the sky but one of the reasons I love working in Photoshop um, with layers and with uh, presets rather than Lightroom is that because we've got it on a new layer we can turn the opacity down which changes that effect completely it blends it in it means that we're not doing it at 100% we can start at zero and just start to push that slider up until we get to a point where we're happy with how it looks and for me I think somewhere around 60% is is where we want it to be it's brought out the detail on the rock here we've got some of those really nice tones but it hasn't completely 
overblown the image. We've still got that sky detail that we've put in. We've still got nice tones on Charlie's skin. We've still got a little bit of green coming in from those trees in the background. So I think that is a much better looking shot overall. Um, so let's just press Control and S. That's going to take us uh, back into Lightroom. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is add another graduated filter. This time we're going to go down on the exposure and just pull it in on this rock down here uh, just to help draw the eye a little bit more because we've got this big empty rock face on that's dominating the majority of our image and so what I want to do is just try and help the eye be drawn a bit more towards Charlie and a bit away from the rock so if we just go before and after it's small but I think it's a, a really it's a really good shift there um, and if we have a look at the original of this shot let's just go with reset all settings so that was our original that was what i had this is what i put on my deviant art page because i hadn't at this point i don't think i was really doing anything with my images i was just taking them and, and uploading them so we've gone from that to this and i think it's made a huge huge difference we've got a, a shot which is much more punchy charlie's face is more um is more visible with some really lovely tones and uh, I, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with this with that flare coming in is, is nice it again because we already had this lens flare here so we haven't artificially added in a um, uh, uh, had a, haven't uh, artificially added in a, a huge flare it's just a little bit of a hint to emphasize what already was there um, so yeah again before and after I'm pretty pleased with what we've achieved here from a uh, a twelve year old um, a twelve year old image, um, yeah. Um, let me know what you what you think about um, what you think about this. Katie's in the comments saying the oh, sky is so much better. Thank you. I uh, I agree too because uh, yeah. Again, we've gone from empty nothingness. You know, you can zoom in on this and there is no detail to be seen whatsoever. And if you posted that as it is, it just looks like a completely blown out empty sky could be any season that could be clouds could be anything but what we've done is brought back we haven't gone overboard on that blue because again if it's too saturated if it's too um too bold so you know we can just go in now and bring back you know it looks insane it looks so deep and over processed and everything and but instead it's a subtle it's a subtle hint you know let's leave it at minus 12 that looks that looks okay and do check because it is starting to you know this is again the, the issue with low low resolution files um, you don't get a lot of scope for that sort of editing you know the further you bring it down the more of that weird transition line you can see so yeah okay let's leave it at let's say say minus five that's probably fine um, yeah so I think that's I think that's been a huge a huge shift so um, I'm going to move on. What time are we on? Ten past. I've been going for an hour and ten minutes, and uh, there are still there are still people watching. I am absolutely gobsmacked. Um, okay, in which in which case, let's move on to. Uh, I'm going to make this one a quicker one. This is a shot uh, in Lincoln when I was at university. This was 2010. This is 10 years old. Um, taken on a 350D. And this is a shot that I seem to remember being quite happy with because I'd thought about, oh, I'm going to get the camera lower to the ground so I get some of this this uh, street and these old cobbles and this this house which is all lopsided and um, and stuff. But you've just got the hint of the cathedral coming out, and I agree with all those things. You know, I'd, I'd it's one of the it's one of the earlier images that I can look at when I go through my old images where I was evidently really thinking about composition rather than just pointing my camera at a thing and pressing the shutter button. This time I really thought about some of those elements, but I haven't thought about them loads because it's it's still all lopsided and um, uh, this is a raw file. I'm hoping that this is just the white balance which is completely off. Um, rather than I've used some sort of filter because I also did buy at this point some very very cheap colored plastic uh, filter slides which I put in front of the lens which gave various weird effects and just ruined the pictures and meant that you can't rescue them afterwards I can't do anything to them uh, because 
you can't really correct for that sort of thing. So let's hope that I can do some more here. First of all, it's completely lopsided. I want to line up certainly the cathedral in the background. Uh, it's also lined up with these with, with these windows. I want to crop in quite a bit more. Um, I still want to keep uh, pretty much the overall composition. I want the road to be in the excuse me in the lower thirds. I want the cathedral to be at the point of the the uh, uh, intersecting top left third. Um, I do think that's quite a nice composition. So yeah, I think that's I think that's good because I. I like that this isn't a picture of the cathedral. This is a picture of like the old part of Lincoln up at the top of Steep Hill, which, as its name suggests, is a steep hill. Um, so the the cathedral is just sort of poking out behind these really old buildings, which I think looks really nice. I'm actually going to shift it across to about there, which I think is just keeping in line there a little bit more. No, one more. Uh, there, that's where it's going to go. Nice. Um, okay, so let's uh, just see what we can do with this white balance because it is all over the place. Um, Secret Agent Santa says that house is wild. Uh, Matt Siegel says, hey, Lincoln is nearish to me. Um, yeah, it, Lincoln was, uh, and Pete's in the comment, Pete was my university buddy. Uh, Lincoln is where I went to university. It is a beautiful city. I loved it very much. I haven't been back in many years, but I would like to soon. Uh, maybe even with Pete. Um, let's go with our white balance. Let's just see what auto does. Okay, it's it's gone some way to fix it, but the tint is off. We've got a very purple cast to this scene. So let's bring that right down, minus 26. I think that is already looking tons better before and after. Yeah, that's made a lot of difference already to to this shot we've got more natural looking blues in the sky we've got better looking tones on the buildings this is looking good okay the highlights are going to bring down just a little bit because that's all in the sky and i'm going to boost those shadows uh a little bit to bring back some of the detail in the buildings what else do we want to do let's have a let's have a look through some of these presets and see if any of them are going to lend themselves well because some of these might because they have a bit of a filmic look it's going to complement quite well the old-fashioned buildings we're seeing these old cobbles so we might get something nice out of these and again it's great in Lightroom you can just you're not clicking you're just moving the mouse over the top and as you do you get all these different effects so it's great great for inspiration um, like I love having a good amount of presets but you don't want to just click them because then your shots will either they'll look like everyone else's who are using those presets and certainly if you're buying preset packs from popular photographers you know if you maybe if you are a Pete McKinnon fan I I'm sure he sells presets I don't actually know for certain but you know and you just click his preset hoping that your shots will look like his either they will just look like his in which case well then your shots just look exactly like someone else's what's the point um, you know, try and have your own, own own style, or more likely is that you'll try and just one click use someone else's preset, and they built their presets to work really well for their style of photography, but it, maybe it won't work well on yours, and you'll end up either with a shot that looks weird, or you'll just be very disappointed that you've bought these presets for I don't know 100 quid, and it uh, doesn't really work for you. So apply them, use them as inspiration, and then make your own edits on top. Take your photography in the direction that you want it to go. Um, sorry if that sounds preachy. I'm not trying to be preachy. I'm just, hopefully that's good advice. Okay, um, I'm gonna go back to, I actually think A6 Raw looks good, but I'm gonna play around a little bit more. It needs to be brighter. And I need to bring those, those highlights down a little bit further. And also I'm gonna cool it down a bit more. Um, that is looking better I think um, I'm going to again use a graduated filter I'm going to uh, take everything off it for now show selected mask we're going to move it right up here and I'm going to bring that down a little bit up the contrast and up that clarity a little bit as you do as I do you can see the difference it's making to the clouds right in the top of the frame have a look at this little wispy curl and these little bits. 
as I go from there and we bring it up, that texture and detail really pops out a lot more. So I'm going to leave it actually quite high, about 40, but crucially you can see that it's affecting the buildings. You do not want it to affect the buildings. So the way we're going to do that, add a little bit of dehaze, is go to our range mask. And that is going to allow us, if you go to luminance, to tell Lightroom that we don't want that uh, effect to be applied to either the very dark parts or not in the very light parts. In this instance, the buildings are dark, so we can say, uh, by dragging up this dark slider, we can say, no, 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 don't apply in the dark parts, don't apply in the dark parts. And as you can see, from here, pay attention to this bit. In fact, maybe if we zoom in and drag over here, look at the amount of red that's on this bit of the building here. And as we drag this slider up, it disappears. On, off, on, off, on, off. Other way around. On, off, on, off. There we go. So about here, is the point where we're not really getting any of that effect applying to the buildings, which is exactly what we want. Zoom back out, turn that off. That means that we can safely know that those filters, those effects rather, are being applied to the sky, but they're not affecting anything else. So we could probably bring down that exposure if we wanted, knowing that we're also not getting uh, a, a strong effect on the building. I don't want to bring it down that far. A little bit, maybe a bit more on the dehaze, maybe a little bit more on the clarity. No, let's not, let's not go nuts. Something around there looks good. Uh, turn that off, and before and after, before and after. Again, we're not doing huge edits. We're just basically trying to correct a, a, a gr weird, grungy-looking shot, make it look like a really nice snap that you'd have actually been proud to have, um, to have taken at the time. Uh, Danny McNamara says it's worth keeping your photos from yesteryear that you otherwise thought were meh I've learned from this yeah that is hopefully what I wanted to, to get across you know using certainly using new tools because it wasn't necessarily that I didn't know how to do this sort of editing back then I didn't I certainly didn't but also some of the tools in, including the um, the luminance range tool that I've just shown you that didn't exist you know the the software has massively improved it can bring back details in the highlights and in the shadows but it couldn't have done 10 years ago so you know there is an argument that it's not just about the picture but the software has grown as well so sometimes revisiting those old photos but with modern day software can be a really really great way of getting new effects uh okay um let's have a quick look uh, we can darken that blue a little bit more if we wanted again with the blue luminance we can do a little bit the yellows are mostly in the cathedral let's make those pop a little bit more the oranges yeah let's bring the brightness of those oranges up a bit have we got any greens not really have we got any aquas not really um so other than that i don't think there's loads more that i want to do i will see what it looks like to put another graduated filter this one just darkening just the bottom of this scene just to add a little bit of shadow again it's about drawing the eye to where you want it to go and in this case it's the middle of the scene with those buildings so having just a big um expanse of flagstones in the bottom of the scene you know yeah you'll you'll take them in as part of the whole picture but by darkening it down it just encourages the viewer more towards where you want them to go if we just turn that off then it, it's quite bright down there um you know we've got all this detail we've got these leaves and instead it's just leading the eye up into the scene that i think is everything i'm going to do to this shot except i think that's a bird um i don't want it go away bye bird that's how easy it is to do object removal in, in Lightroom, which is another tool which wasn't really, uh, if it was even available in Lightroom 10 years ago um, or whenever Lightroom started, uh, it probably wasn't very good. Whereas that is, um, you know, uh, Lightroom's uh, object removal, it's, it's smart tools like that have um, uh, really, really have done, kind of come a long way. I've uh, just seen that Mark Grundy is in the, uh, uh, is in the comments. He says, "Good tip. Didn't know that Luma mask slider was a thing. Uh, it is a thing. Uh, it's it's quite new. I think they only launched it about six months ago. Uh, maybe a little bit longer. So it's um, it is quite new, but it's super helpful for this sort of thing." 
Uh, he also says, also think it looked 100% better with a big, thick black border, winky face, which is a direct reference to all my photography that I did back then, which did all have a massive black border. Actually, it didn't. It had a, I put a thin white border and then a big black border around everything and then posted to DeviantArt. So if you look at my DeviantArt page, almost everything has got a big black border. And it's not a, it's not a good thing to do. I, I mean, at the time I liked it, it kind of looked like, it was being displayed in a gallery, but it wasn't. It was very, uh, it was very in line with my uh, uh, emo kid sensibilities at the time, as were many of my photos. Okay, uh, I'm going to consider this shot done. This is the before. We've got orangey tones. We haven't got any uh, a lot of detail in the sky. Um, you know, it, it wasn't great. And then we've brought in uh, some more natural tones. We've brought out some of the detail on the uh, on the buildings, the sky, the cloud detail is is there. I think it's it's this has changed it from a um, a snap which you'd look at and throw away, um, or you you maybe go through your your old catalogue and and you wouldn't pay any attention, and suddenly we've got actually uh, a nice shot which um, I think is yeah I think it looks pretty good because um, we've got we've got some good looking buildings this one this higgledy piggledy thing lopsided I think that's someone's house I, I hope it's still standing um, it looks in pretty good condition despite its its lean. Um, you know, we've got the cathedral there. I think this is a really nice um, sort of travel snap from uh, from Lincoln. Okay, uh, on that note, I'm going to move on. Will we get a link to your DeviantArt, says Shy Violet. Um, no. No, no, we're not. Um, maybe. It, I, I have... Um, if, you're, if you are interested, I did a video a few... Um, probably a couple of months ago now that says I... I think it was called I Sucked at Photography. It was a celebration of hitting a thousand subscribers and I went through some of my early photos and some of my early photos were, uh, yeah, they were not good. And that's kind of what inspired me to do this because I was looking through some of them thinking, well, how could I, if I wanted to change them, is there anything I could do that would make a difference? Um, and certainly there are some tools um, that, that really do. Cropping in particular, um, Emily Price in the comments says, cropping it has made so much difference already. Um, and I, um, yeah, I, thank, thank you, I agree. It, it, it's, it transforms a scene. It's one of the big things you can do to really, really transform a shot. But again, it, it really depends on uh, whether the image allows for the crop. In this instance, we firstly, we had more resolution, but also the, what, there was things were already lined up in a way that allowed for that crop to change the picture whereas some of the other ones there's very little you can do with a crop which is going to change uh, change the whole shot um let's move on to this one because this is another good example i think of how a crop is going to transform things this is the one that i used as my promo picture this is the one that i um i put on the holding still for this stream uh, that you might remember um I've done a couple of edits to this, then I reset them. So we're starting from scratch. But again, this one is definitely one which benefits from a crop. And the reason being is that we've got these sort of rocks in the foreground, which I think I was standing on a little bit of an outcrop. But again, like I wasn't thinking about composition properly. I just basically pointed the camera, at, oh, here's a nice bit of lake um, with a nice house. But I hadn't really thought about how everything is lining up in the scene. And as a result, this is a, just a... It's a very forgettable snap. It, it isn't really anything that you'd look at and think, oh yeah, whoa, a nice picture. Even though we've got the nice details of the lake moving around and has some nice clouds going on, but there's so much more we can do. And the crop is gonna help. So I'm gonna keep the aspect ratio the same for now. I might narrow it down. First of all, we're gonna, need, we're gonna straighten it up because our horizon is going along here. So something like that. But the things that we really need in this crop the, 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 the focus of the piece is really going to be around this house. And so I want to bring this crop right down because all this land over here is redundant, basically. It's not part of the scene. The scene is the lake uh, and, or I actually think it's an inlet from the ocean, uh, the ocean and it's the, the house. So we want to bring that in as much as possible. And actually, thinking about it, I am going to do a different aspect ratio. We're going to go 169 because that's going to help us get rid of some of this empty, dead foreground. We also don't need quite as much detail in the sky. So what I'm going to do is do a 169 and we're going to bring it right in like this. And this is just 
it's not quite cutting off uh, this bit of the, the coast because we don't want to cut off anything in our scene. We want to make sure we're keeping everything in that we should be and we're placing the house. Ideally, I'd have it a little bit more uh, here in this part of the scene, but then we are cutting this off a little bit more. So we're going to put it around here instead. I think that looks good. And again, we're cutting off a lot of this dead uh, dead space around here. So if we press enter immediately, that has transformed that shot from this wide picture of basically nothing into something that draws your eye in a lot more. The focus has been brought so much more to this house. You, Your eye wants to wander around this coastline in a way that before it just didn't because the it, it was all over the place and the coast was just one small part of the scene that had been sort of shoved up and out of the picture where now it is the picture. That is what we're looking at. Uh, it's made a massive, massive difference. And unfortunately, I, I didn't take the picture like that to begin with, which is disappointing. But by learning how you can recrop a picture, learning how you can compose shots like this is going to help you uh, actually compose your shots better when you take them. So by me, I've already learned when I'm looking at this shot that by using a crop like this, that that is where I need the scene to be. Were I to be standing there now taking the photo, I know exactly how I would want to compose this shot. So it's a really good thing to think about that is going to transform your shots more than any, no, no more, any of the other settings that I'm going to change now, any of the other edits I'm going to do are all secondary to the crop. The crop is the thing that has transformed this shot just really hammering home the importance of crops or r rather the importance of good composition in the first place mm -mm -mm. Danny McNamara says that looks so good now uh, thank you Danny it certainly it certainly has made a big difference hasn't it okay let's actually do some uh, some proper work on this and we're gonna up the exposure a little bit it's a little bit dark uh, the contrast I'm going to add up a tiny bit, but we're going to do a little bit more with that later. I think we could stand to bring the shadows up. Um, the whites I'm going to leave right in the middle. The dehaze I'm going to up a little bit because it is a little bit hazy. It's got that summer light sort of coming through, but very, very subtly. Dehaze is a tool that if you use too much, things go weird quickly and uh, it's not good. So I think. A very small amount something like that is is all we need off and on it's brightened the scene it's lifted those shadows a little bit we're in a, we're getting to be in a good place uh, again we're gonna lean on our graduated filters these are this is probably the the tool I use the most um, I really think it makes a huge difference uh, we're gonna focus on the sky first I'm gonna reset that exposure uh, just to bring it down a little bit and we're going to pull this down and again you can see where it's going to be um, applying so you can decide where you want it to be and again as we we're talking about with feathering before by feathering it off uh, it means that there's a very natural blend between where you have and where you haven't applied the the effect which means it's um, it shouldn't be as obvious what you've done uh, okay uh, on that filter I'm going to bring up in fact, I've turned it off. Let's go back on it. Let's help. Turn it off. There we go. Okay, we're going to up the contrast on that sky. We're going to bring the shadows down on that sky. We're going to up the clarity on that sky. And we're going to pump up the dehaze a little bit on that sky. All of which... Ooh, maybe drop those highlights. No, not too much. And let's bring up the back the exposure. And look at the difference that that has made. If we just go and turn off and on the details on those clouds are popping out so much more but it's not a massive shift we haven't replaced the sky with something else we haven't painted in new clouds we haven't completely transformed things it is reasonably subtle but it's just making those details pop which is enough to make the whole scene uh, just come alive a little bit more uh, we're going to add another one of these this time just darkening and again we're going to bring it in to darken uh, the bottom part of the scene the reason being is that we again we haven't got anything that we really want too visible in the scene we tried to crop out 
uh, a lot of those spare rocks that were hanging hanging around but there's only so much we can do with a crop so instead we're going to bring the exposure uh, right down just to encourage your eye away from the bottom half of the scene so again brings our eyes more towards the middle in particular that really nice house next to the coast this was on uh i think this was on one of the um the outer hebrides islands um when i was on a a hike which was good and bad for a number of reasons um but uh yeah, it's, this is a really, really beautiful place. I don't know if it's a farm or, or what, but it's certainly a place where I think I would love to see. Nate says, Andy, was this taken from a moving car? The rocks in the foreground look almost motion blurred. Yes, they. It, this was taken. That's a good point, and I forgot to say, this was taken from a car, and I've got a couple of shots which I didn't include. Uh, I selected this from about five that I took, and yes, this was taken from a moving car, uh, uh, but it was taken at... Uh, four hundredth of a second so fast enough shutter speed so that the house and the the distance is um uh is nice and pin sharp but we're moving at a speed that yes you're right there is some motion blur going on down here so yeah this was this was a snap from a car not even a um not even a proper shot which explains i suppose why i use such a bad composition to begin with so maybe it's a good example of if you take a quick snap from a car how you can then take hopefully quite a nice photo um from it uh afterwards but again you need to make sure that you're taking a shot at uh, sufficient resolution and in raw to allow you to make these edits katie says in the comments what were the bad reasons do you share absolutely not um uh let's just say i wasn't feeling all that well and we'll leave it at that um Okay, uh, what else do I want to do? Um, I think I'm going to take this over into Photoshop. And we're going to do a little bit of dodging and burning. And dodging and burning means painting in some, uh, some brightness or some darkness, depending on where you want the lightness and darkness to be. So the way I do my dodging and burning is by creating a new layer. And I go to Edit. I go to Fill. I fill it with 50% gray, and look at that. We've got a beautiful photo. Uh, I love all the different tones. I love the contrast we've got. A jest, of course. It's a big square of gray. So we go with our blending mode, and we click Overlay. Now, Overlay is a blending mode that hides anything which is 50% gray. So obviously, it hides that layer. But what that means, though, is that if you get your brush tool, and if you paint in... Uh, if you paint in white, then it brightens the image. If you paint in black, it darkens the image. Now, obviously, those are two extreme examples. So what we do is we use a very, very low flow, which allows you basically to build the effect up as you go. So as you can see, the more I move my mouse over this, it builds up that darkness. It's a very, very good way of, uh, of getting in some nice natural brushing rather than it being a very obvious effect. So we're going to zoom in a bit and I'm going to do that by brushing over some of these little bits of hills. I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush size, smaller still, something like this. And we're going to brush it in on, on basically the way I like to do my judging and burning on landscapes is I try and um, add a little bit more shadow where there are already shadows add a little bit more highlights where there are already highlights. It allows you to, it's basically almost like selectively adding contrast in some scenes, but it also really allows you to sculpt um, some of the landscape and by uh, by emphasizing the way that the light is, is flowing over those hills um, in a way that you can't do by just bumping up uh, the contrast. I'm not gonna spend ages on this because um, it would be dull. Uh, but I'm just going to kind of vaguely try and show you how I would uh, how I would do this. Okay, bringing this down. Um, Snail Scribbles says, "Are there still purist photographers who don't do any edits on their photos?" When I was into photography, brackets like ten years ago, there were a lot of these people. Um, I'm sure there. I'm sure there are. It tends to be an argument I see less 
and less um, for a number of re- a number of reasons. One of the biggest things that always bugged me was often film photographers would would talk about oh how oh no digital photography is just it's fake and and you know they can do uh, you know uh, they do all this stuff in Photoshop which means it's a fake image. But a lot of those people seem to forget that the amount of work that you do if you are doing your own uh, printing of images in the darkroom uh, you can do all of you can do so many different effects you know there is there is editing of a photo when you take your photo if you the different types of film that you decide to shoot on will uh, completely affect how your colors or the contrast comes out in your image which is editing and dodging and burning are to our tools and terms that come from developing in the, in the darkroom because you can literally you literally ex- expose your image for more time or less time in certain areas in order to brighten and darken the picture so um you know how how long you expose your shots for all of these things um double exposures are our film uh our film techniques so um there's always been photo manipulation um, there's a lot more discussion these days around people who do more um, drastic edits. There's a lot of uh, uh, big Instagram uh, Instagrammers who have been caught out by um, maybe doing photos of Iceland and they've they've put different mountains in the scene in order just to make it look more dramatic. But they haven't said so, or they've replaced skies completely, or they've put people into shots uh, to you know to get that dramatic picture of a person looking out on a cool landscape um where there wasn't a person and um there's lots of things obviously that that people do and i think that is completely legitimate stuff to do in your art like why not you know art is art do what you want to do to create the picture you want to create the problem lies certainly for me and what, what i think should be the case in photography is the people that don't say that what they've done is a is a is a is a, like a, a fake image or composited is what it would be called when you put in different elements from other pictures into one into one image because it then it becomes a lie then it's it you're trying to you what you are saying is hey look at this place i've been to and actually it isn't that because maybe you've taken out a building and you put in a mountain or you put in a tree or uh you know you put in a person or anything like that and it becomes um, a very different image that is a great sort of photography to do you've just got to be honest about when you're doing it I tend not to do that because that isn't my way um, I also shoot uh, editorially and as we'll know truth in journalism is important and so if I'm shooting uh, an editorial feature or something um, I will do exposure adjustments to brighten up the scene I might um, you know, do things like correct the colours but I won't take things out, I won't add things in, because you need to make sure that your images are honest. For my personal work in landscapes, I'm just going in with the white now, by the way, just adding in some brightness onto some of these bits. A little bit of this house here, a little bit of this rock. Um, on some of my landscapes, I might take out things which... My, my rule is if, if the thing is not permanently there, I will take it out. So. Um, for example, this uh, uh, telegraph pole here is there. It's permanently there, so it stays. Um, whereas, for example, if there was a big, um, I don't know, maybe this house had put in a, a, a portaloo because they were doing some building work and, you know, there was a distracting portaloo there, I'd probably take that out because, you know, in, in, in two weeks' time afterwards, someone came to this spot, that portaloo wouldn't be there. So it seems then it's kind of fine... Um, in order to um, uh, you know take that out and to show the scene as it is I think it's sort of similar I've used similar um, ethics I suppose uh, when I've done portraiture where um, you know I, I I think there's there's too much photoshopping in in fashion and portraiture but if someone if I was taking a, a portrait of someone and, and on the day they had a big pimple that had sprouted overnight fine take that out because two days later that pimple won't be there but if they've got you know i have a mole if they had a mole or a birthmark or or even um you know uh maybe age lines and things you know you don't want to take those out because they, those are the things that make you 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 don't want to um i don't know i don't you don't want to be feeling bad about those things and wanting to remove them um 
Unless, as I always do, if I'm taking self-portraits of myself, which I've done some on Instagram recently, and I Photoshop the living crap out of them. Because it's my face, and if I want to Photoshop my face, I will. But I won't do it on someone else's, um, unless they specifically wanted. You know, if I was doing a picture for someone's family portrait and they said, oh, you know, I'm really sorry, but do you mind if I take that? Maybe we'd talk about whether they really wanted it to. But... Um, Anyway, I've gone off on a big tangent on honesty in um, photography. Thanks for bringing that up, uh, Snail Scribbles. Um, so, uh, and hopefully that was a, a good answer. So let's just turn off my Dodge Ing and Burning and just have a look at the difference it's made. We're, we're carving out the detail. You can see the undulations, which is a word I love, by the way, in the land. Uh, the, the shadows really sculpt, particularly around this part. You see so much more of the, the actual shape and dimensions of those little hills, um, which I just think adds so much more life and character to this scene. Um, and again, you can spend as long as you want over dodging and burning. It's a very, very simple thing to do. And because it's on a new layer, we can turn it off. Or we could grab the opacity slider and turn it down. Or if we wanted, we could literally drag and duplicate that layer and make it double the strength. Obviously, we don't want to do that because then it looks too much. I actually might bring it down to, let's just say, 85. It just takes the edge off, makes it a little bit more subtle. Um, so yeah, we've already got a nicer looking scene. Let's just merge that layer down by pressing Control and E, uh, duplicate it, so we've, again, got our background layer. And let's go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and let's have a look and see if there are any of the nice presets that we want to apply in, in Photoshop. So let's just go down. I don't want to use any of the Flurn ones. They're too, too aggressive for this sort of thing. We want a subtle filmic touch. Ooh, you know what? I like the tones in this one. I like that we've got a slightly warmer, orangey look in the greens. Let's go for that. Let's start off with this anyway, because I'm going to... Um, uh, uh, we're going to do more with it, because we're going to start off by bringing the opacity down, because it's, it's adding quite a lot to that scene. So I'm going to bring it down to about, I think, 40%. Turn on and off. Again, this might be too subtle to see in the uh, in the stream, but hopefully, um, hopefully you get the you get the idea. And what I'm going to do then is press uh, Control E to merge it down again, duplicate that layer, and then we're going to go back into Camera Raw Filter, and we can then apply another layer on top. Again, this is a benefit of working in Photoshop rather than in Lightroom. In Lightroom, you one-click a preset and it applies it at the maximum amount and you can't do anything about it. If you do it in Photoshop, you can apply it in layers and then you can build those up. And each time I might apply a, a, a different preset at maybe 10% strength, just a little bit of toning in some uh, that, that brings out certain areas. And then you add another one and another. So you get a completely original look tone from your shots but you've used presets that maybe you bought um, and other people are just using uh, with one click so this is a great way of, 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 of making your shots your own so now we can go through and we can look at some of the other colors I actually quite like a5 adding in some of these blues I quite like a6 I really like a9 okay a9 I'm gonna go and again, we're going to bring it right down to zero. And then we're going to start to bring it up bit by bit. Again, I think somewhere around 40% is maybe where I want that to be. Turn it off, turn it on. I think we're in a good place there. I don't think I want to touch this anymore. Uh, so I'm going to go Control S, save it. Back over into Lightroom, we can see our shot is here. The last thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to hide the metadata, is bringing another filter darkening down this top left hand corner is a little bit bright in comparison to the rest of it it's distracting my eye a little bit so I'm going to pull in that filter uh, just like that bring it down a little bit a little bit more something like that and I am going to because it's affecting over here quite a bit as well uh, I'm then going to just click on brush and erase 
and I'm going to use quite a large brush with a big feather so that it's a very soft effect. And I'm just going to brush away where I don't want that filter to be. Just to kind of help it, actually that was a little bit too much, let's just do this, much bigger, bigger brush to make it a very, very subtle effect. Brush it away just from where it was kind of doubling up from our last filter. The new ones come in and where those two are intersecting, it's obviously applying quite a lot. We don't want that. So instead, what we've got is this mask where it's feathered off here. And if we just go before and after, it's just helped bring those highlights down, made this corner a little less distracting. And I think if we have a look at this shot, and again, let's just go with uh, develop settings, reset. This is what we started with on this image. And this was, as we found out, a quick snap taken from a moving car. It was taken in a hurry and um, there's a lot wrong with it. But by using the crop tool and by taking it over into Photoshop, we have created this, which I think is actually a really nice scene. There's still plenty that is wrong that we could we could fix and do more with, but by thinking about how we want to crop, thinking about the elements that are in this shot and how we want them to be uh, arranged in the scene, um, I think we've come away with something which is uh, much nicer. Flick between them. Again, natural tones. We haven't gone overboard in doing something totally wild and, and, and unusual. I think it's done a lot to make this actually quite a nice shot. Um, just going to have a quick look into the comments at this point. Uh, uh, Shy, Violet, Shy Violet says this would be in a calendar. Um, yeah, maybe it would be a calendar of uh, shots taken from the car. Um, not a not a calendar I would buy. Uh, Nate says needs more wild animals. I agree. I would love I would love to have more wild animals in this. I haven't done a lot of um, wildlife photography. I did some with some ospreys up in the Highlands. Uh, a few years ago, um, and I'm hoping to do so again, particularly now lockdown restrictions are uh, slowly, slowly beginning to ease in Scotland, and I should be able to go out um, rent a nice big lens, bigger than this one. This is my 70 to 200 f 2.8. Um, it's a very good lens, very expensive lens, but it's uh, not big enough for wildlife. You need big lenses. And uh, the, the last one I borrowed was about fourteen thousand um, pounds, so not one that I decided to buy for my usual collection. Right? Okay. Where are we then? We've done a few good ones, and let's try and do. I haven't done anything on this one ever, but let's see. Let's see what we can get out of this, because we've kind of got a decent composition potentially with these with these hills and we've got this you know in as, as sort of foreground interest um let's start off by uh cropping in quite heavily something like this and we'll straighten it up uh okay immediately i think that looks better because we've got this hill maybe a little bit over here this hill is sort of in our left thirds. We've got this down here, almost at kind of the intersection point of, of this rule of thirds. Now, I will say, I, I've been trying to kind of line these things up with the rule of thirds. Now, the rule of thirds, it's called the rule of thirds. It should only ever be considered a rough guide. It is not the be-all and end-all in composition. Some of my favorite shots that, that I've done have completely flouted the rule of thirds. Um, particularly, I like doing um, images with a lot of negative space where you intentionally have something in a very far uh, side of an image and you've got lots of empty space, which you can use to kind of highlight Maybe it's a grand landscape and there's one small object or a person or a building or something. So don't always think that it has to be the rule of thirds is my point. But for this shot, I think it works It works uh, quite well. Actually, I think it worked well as it was before, like that. Um, okay, let's start off by brightening up a little bit, uh, brightening up these shadows, bringing down that highlight. Again, we're going to bring in a... This one is going to be super quick. We're going to bring in... Uh, adjustment on the top, up that contrast a little bit, up the clarity, 
up for the dehaze because when we do suddenly yeah it's gone grainy but we've now brought out a moody sky that is pretty cool uh but a little bit less i think on the clarity because it's getting noisy we could even do some denoise a little bit like that okay and then before and after we've just brought out more of that punch in the sky i think we have gone a bit overboard i'm gonna lighten it up a little bit maybe pump up that contrast just a touch okay um uh, I don't like this one as much, but I do think already, you know, that crop has made a bit of a difference. You know, if we considered this bit of log to be foreground interest, which frankly it isn't, but, you know. Uh, let's have a look through um, if we wanted to put in a nice colour preset. Because so I'm having a look through, and you know what, none of them are really... None of them are really popping out at me. I wonder if some of the um, profiles that Adobe has, Artistic 03 sometimes look quite nice because it gives a very warm hue to the greens, but you know what? I don't love it. I think we're going to just stick to Au Natural in this. Let's up our white balance a touch, up our tint ever so slightly. Um, okay. I don't love this. I don't really think there's loads I can really do, but let's see let's see where we get to. Okay, um, exposure. I'm going to bring up a little bit, and we're just going to paint that in around here, just to brighten up that log, brighten up this, and a little bit just along the fall line of those hills. When was this taken? 2006. So it's about 14 years ago. Um, Okay, so before and after, all I really want to be doing with this shot is brightening it up, making it a bit more of a of a scene that you can actually see what's going on. And I think we're 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 getting there. We're at that point pretty much. Let's have a look again in our hues. Um, the, there's most of what we've got is going on is in the greens. If we bring that down, it goes very yellowy. And I don't I don't think I love that for this. I want those nice vibrant greens. The yellows, however, we could try and pull back. Just a little bit, a little bit under. The oranges. Now, so if we do the only orange is in that log, and if we pull it down, it goes pink. So, so let's leave it. Let's leave it where it was. But we can maybe bring the luminance down because it is a little bright. So that is helping just keep the highlights of that under control. We can maybe try and do the same with the greens. Bring those up a little bit. The yellows. The yellows will keep down. Okay. The blues. If we bring those down, just creates a uh, horribly noisy sky. So we don't want to do that. In fact, maybe we could bring them up. No, 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 no. <laughs> Leave it right in the middle. Great. Okay, good to know. Hues. Are there any purples? Yes, there are some purples, particularly in that mountain. So we're going to bring those down because there aren't. We don't want purples uh, in amongst that blue. It, it, it's when it starts to look a bit noisy and weird. So by bringing the purples into blue is matching the rest of the blue tones in that mountain that's good every time i say blue tones i think of the band blue tones and the opening bass line for the song if starts to play in my head if it doesn't for you go and listen to the song if by the blue tones and you'll know what i mean we're going to get rid of that boy and we're going to get rid of that little bit of whatever it is again uh the boy is not permanently there, so I do not have any qualms in taking them out. Um, you know, a, a big a tree here, a rock or something like that, I would not get rid of. Um, even this log, I probably wouldn't get rid of, um, even though, you know, it, it could probably float off at some point or be taken away. Um, so, and over here, a couple of little distracting elements. Um, maybe canoes there's some things over here i don't mind that boat so much but i don't know what this i think it's a bit of a dinghy and i don't want it in my shot and that so it's just cleaning it up if we just if we just turn that off you know you can see these points that one in particular is very distracting so i do think that has made a um, a bit of difference um, in just cleaning up this shot ah i don't know what else i want to do let's have a in the calibration is a good way of just like messing around with the tones purely seeing what they do oh this is this is taking things into quite an instagrammy uh teal and orange palette all right let's see what that does add it but then bring down the saturation there 
Okay, you know what, actually, this is taking out a lot of that blue and making it much more of a desaturated image is, is, is working for me quite a bit. What are these doing? Take saturation out, we up that saturation in the greens a little bit. Yeah, this is this is looking better. This is more what I had in mind. I mean this might actually work quite well as a black and white. At the moment we've I like where I like where we've come to with it. I wonder if go back to our presets and let's go down the bees. No, I don't think there's a strong enough foreground because we are sort of seeing this that log as a foreground, but in black and white it just basically gets lost, whereas here it's more noticeable that it's there. I'm going to go back down to our red primary and move that back. If we upped saturation or brought it down, let's leave it in the middle. And what's this doing? Up and down. Okay, somewhere around there, very muted, very muted tones. I do think we need to up the exposure a little bit more because it's a little bit, uh, a little bit dim. I'm going to bring the contrast up slightly. Maybe bring the shadows back down a little bit. Okay, I, I'm not happy with this. I don't, I don't love it, and, I, and I'm definitely going to, um, I'm definitely going to call this one a day. It's it's better than it was by by a long way. Particularly, um, you know the the crop as it was uh, was was all off. If we um, uh, not before, in fact, let's just go with um, uh, let's reset our crop. This is what it was like. Um, I, I think. I mean, I don't. I think the crop is. A bit better than the original, but um, I actually now I've now I've seen my edits and I've gone back. I don't hate that. What if we tried it as a sixty-nine? We kept it wide, or even unlock it and make it even more panoramic. Something like something like this, like a super wide panorama. That there, straighten it up a little bit. Yeah, you know, I think I might prefer that. Put your thoughts in the comments because honestly, at this point with this shot, I don't know. I think this one, you know, we, we get that more of that reflection, which I think works. I'd like there to be a bit more going on over here. I don't like that I've just cut off um, part of the the uh, the shoreline, but maybe this one is a little bit better. Um, one of the benefits of messing around with your shots, there is no right or wrong way to edit. It's a process. You can play around. You can do it exactly as you want. Uh, and maybe you will try something that you love, maybe you'll try something and you hate it. Um, there's loads of different things you can do. Um, so I'm going to leave that one there. And I think, um, let's have a quick look at this one. Because this was another one I took in Scotland on the same trip as the previous shot we were looking at. Um, yeah, people are saying it's it's better it's it's better with the panoramic. Uh, Secret Agent Sam says panorama is lovely, but he misses the green. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe taking out some of that that green vibrance again. You know, play around. This is this is not me saying this is how to edit this photo because there is no one way. What I'm hoping to get across are a bunch of ways that you can make a bunch of ways of using these tools that you could apply to your own photos in whatever way you want um, and experiment with trying to get some new life out of your old photos. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to straighten this up so that we've got a uh, neater horizon. This is actually one where I think I'm going to, back to what I was saying about um, not obeying with the rule of thirds, I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to have the line of thirds here, but our subject really is this boat. And I'm going to have that really far down here. And the reason I like it like that is that, first of all, we're keeping all of this amazing sky with these rays coming down. But I think that having um, an object in uh, in like the extreme end of one of, of an image really emphasizes all the space around it. So this really this is highlights the the landscape that boat is sitting in. It highlights these big skies, the dramatic clouds. So I think sometimes it is a really nice way of, of composing a shot is to not have things just 
centered and not to be cutting out the sky because you want it to obey the rule of thirds if there's a reason to keep those elements in there then then do um you know play around and um uh certainly that is a good you know a good reason to maybe not crop so tightly when you're taking your shot because it does then give you a bit more scope in post to maybe crop in as you want to um, which is certainly more the case today with uh, much higher resolution cameras um, this was another one on my 350d as you can see up here even in raw the file size is, is very small in comparison to the sort of 7,000 pixels that I'm usually used to working with on my uh, my professional gear so um, you know the higher resolution you've got a lot more scope to crop in but still get a very very uh, detailed image whereas this um, there's not there's not tons of t tons of detail uh, to work with but there is some so it's good let's start by brightening up a little bit bringing up those shadows a bit but not loads you bring it up too much we start to lose some of that drama on the uh, on the hills opposite so we're going to bring it up only to plus 30 but what we're going to do again here is use a radial filter this one again it's at slightly higher exposure slightly higher shadow as well and we're going to bring in that circle over the boat and again we're going to feather it out all the way uh, so that hopefully it becomes a little less obvious that we've used it and indeed I think if you flick that on and off if you look at it quickly on and off you can tell but if you just saw that straight away you wouldn't necessarily you you see that there's light coming down from the sky falling on the area of the lake where the boat is so it makes sense that that patch could be a little bit brighter so that works for me that looks pretty good um let's let's do some work on the sky let's reset our effects bring in uh that grad filter we can maybe bring the exposure down up the contrast and because we want more contrast in this sky because that is what's going to really define these got these god rays coming down even more uh, maybe maybe a bit of clarity i think maybe the dehaze is going to do a lot yeah dehaze is really adding in again not loads you go too far this happens Blech. do not want this um so a, a subtle touch here is all we need uh what about those highlights we don't want to darken it down too much because then it starts to look a bit moody so i'm going to bring the highlights down but i'm actually going to bring that exposure back um go off and on off and on it has darkened it down but it's really emphasized those rays in a really nice way i think that looks good i haven't touched the white balance and i i don't want to because i really like uh the cool blue hue in this shot and if we start warming it up it you know maybe actually it would start to go more of a sunsetty shot you know oranges and purples but no i'm gonna to go to auto uh no i'm not i'm gonna to go to as shot which is uh yeah nice cool blue which i think really really works for this for this image um there's nothing else that i really want to do to this shot i don't think because i like how it is i might zoom in yeah there we go I'm gonna zoom in and i'm gonna get the brush small 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 brush show mask and we're just going to paint in a little bit on here and very gently bring up those shadows and that exposure just to help the boat itself stand out on that water which it is doing but it's very subtle combined with that radial filter the boat becomes a bit more of the subject in this scene whereas before it was basically a dark silhouette couldn't really see it and now it is there it's noticeable so that's pretty much it except that i want to take out what looks like a windsurfer over here again taking out objects which would not always be there a windsurfer is not always there so we just paint over him or her uh and away it goes it looks almost rude uh don't mind that I, I don't I'm gonna take out the this boy as well because I don't think I mean it's not always gonna be there I think it's actually from the boat um, and I think that makes 
that boy before was a little bit distracting and I think having got rid of it I prefer it but I haven't done a very good job so I am just going to undo that spot removal and I'm going to do it again because we need to go all the way down because also there's the reflection of that boy and we can just move around we're just telling Lightroom hey you know that bit how about if instead of being there you moved it to over here instead and that it's not perfect there are some slight errors here and you could always add in another one try and redo it sort of build those removal tools up enough to the point where um, it doesn't become obvious but at full screen I don't think you can tell at all that something's been removed um, it's only when you really go in that you can see that there's something wrong and that's one of the issues with using a lower resolution camera is that there isn't that detail there to make those sorts of edits so I'm just gonna leave it maybe maybe Photoshop could do a better job but uh, yeah back and forth back and forth I think that's I think that's okay last thing I'm gonna do I know I keep saying I'm done but I'm not done I am doing one more thing bring that brush back and this time I'm gonna bring down the shadows I'm gonna paint it across here, those hills, bring them down a little bit more because bringing those shadows up first time when I was playing around, I think we've lost a lot of that vibrance um, and, uh, sorry, vibrance, the contrast and the drama in the scene. And I want that. And I think uh, adding that back in has made a lot of difference. So there we go. There's one more. Uh, what time are we on? 10 past 8. Well, we have been going some time. Um, that's two hours, in fact. Um, I'm going to do one more. If we've got time, there are still some people watching. Um, thank you very much for still watching. If you are watching the on-demand version of this uh, and you're two hours in, then, uh, you know, well played. Um, you're sticking with it. And this one is uh, another one I'm going to do a quick edit. This isn't an old one. It's from 2018 that I took in the Dolomites. And we're going to start off with a, a tighter, much, much tighter crop this time. We want the top of this mountain here, just there, but we also want this road snaking away into the distance. So that, mm, no, nudge it across. That is where we want it to be. Also straightened up slightly like that. That is good. Um, okay, shadows, we're gonna bring down just a little touch highlights we're going to bring down because there's a lot of highlights in the sky and the more highlights we bring down the more we reveal that mountain and that is great it's another reason that i'm going to use another uh, graduated filter bring it down and if we see that mask again we've got the issues that we're affecting the trees we don't want to affect the trees let's turn that off so we go to range mask luminance show luminance rain mask and we say no 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 not in the trees not in the darker parts only in the lighter parts, which is basically around there. Uh, so we can turn that off, go back up, and now we can start messing about. Bit of contrast, bring those highlights further down, maybe a bit of extra clarity. And suddenly what we've got is a sky where instead of it being an empty, bright, white uh, patch in this scene, We've got cloud detail. The mountain peaks poke out even more. It looks really cool. Um, let's just bring in another darkened one right in the very bottom part of this, uh, this road. Again, it helps draw the eye through the scene, following up that road. Um, yeah, I think that's. Uh, I think we're looking good on that. Let's just take this over into Photoshop because what I will just show as we're talking about removing objects. So. I probably wouldn't take out this sign because it is permanently there, but I do think it is completely spoiling this image. So for the sake of argument, let's take it out and see what it looks like without and, you know, we've seen it in, so I'm not trying to pretend it isn't there. But the great thing is if you just use the spot removal tool, you can paint over it like this, go around, a really bad sore throat. I hope that goes away. And pop. And like magic, it has just got rid of it. You don't need to do anything. It is not a difficult tool to use. You would not know that it was there. I don't know how Photoshop does it. It is like magic. And I'm going to do the same with this little pillar here. Pop. 
do it again, lean it up, there you go. And like it was never there. Never there. Uh, fit on screen. It, I mean, there's no question, it looks better without those distracting signs. It does. But they should be there because they are permanently there. But it is what it is. Let's just uh, keep on going. We're going to duplicate that. Let's go have a look at some of those other filters we we're talking about. Some of the Flurn ones that are quite dramatic. Uh, Flurn, Bohemian, maybe. No, 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 no. Peach blossom. No, too, uh, too moody. What about Earth? Too. Too orange everywhere. I quite like the orangey tones in the um, in the trees, but what about film vibes? Don't dislike that. Mm, okay. What about? Uh, I mean, we could look at male blogger, but I don't think we're going to like it. Nope. I mean, I don't, I don't dislike that. It's just sort of bumped those greens up, made it a bit more vibrant, but it's not really done loads uh, to it because some of these presets focus on other colors, particularly removing oranges, a lot of them, or, or emphasizing oranges. And we don't really have um, a lot of those other tones in there. So, okay, we haven't really got anywhere with those. What about some of, some of our Visco presets, more filmic ones? No, okay, there's not really... Anything that's doing loads, I quite like A6 Raw, half. It's one I use quite a bit, they, they do look really nice. Let's go back to our edits, um, we can have a look at the profiles, artistic. All right, let's go ahead and apply this. This has brought in some nice oranges into our, uh, into our scene. Again, this is making it a very, very different looking scene from what we had, so I'm, I'm not in any way trying to suggest that this is a, uh, a natural way to edit or to do anything like that, but it is um, it is just adding in some some different effects and giving you a different look. If you wanted to play around with old photos, you've got try some new techniques, try some new styles, um, and maybe kind of breathe some very much some new life into uh, into an old into an old scene. Um, this could be a good way of doing that. Uh, into our color mixer, we go to our hues. We can grab our greens and move them around so we could bring them further down into those oranges or keep them I think upping them a little bit slightly counteracting some of the orange that the that profile just did uh, the yellows we could push even further make them very orangey um, yeah let's do that a little bit oranges I don't really think there's much in the way of orange in the scene that we want to affect uh, there is a bit in the road but what we could do is to get saturation take out that orange which has taken out a lot of the tones in the in the road, which made it very kind of much more stark going through the scene, which I think looks pretty cool. Uh, okay, um, luminance. We could play with those yellows. See if we want to bring those up. What about the greens? Yeah. Okay. I don't think there's much more I want to do right now. So let's just apply that. Um, Yeah. Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, merge that down. Duplicate it again. Let's go and have another look at some other color toning uh, effects we might want to use. Maybe this time we'll apply some of our Visco ones. I mean, that is pretty nice. It's like that combination of the uh, the colors that we've got from uh, from the last ones, and then with this one works really well. As does that. As does that. Okay. Let's start off with um, A5, but it's it's too strong. It's far too strong. So we are going to bring it down, and I think we're going to leave it at 45. Off and on, off and on. It's added some blues into the shadows, which looks really really nice. Um, yeah, I think that's done a lot to make our image look really cool. And I think I'm going to leave it there. I think I'm happy with that. So let's just let's just save that. 
back over to Lightroom. Let's have a look at this. Just go reset, uh, develop settings, reset. This is where this one started from. It's very, very wide. You can barely see that mountain. We've got distracting elements in there. This is what we've done. It's very Instagrammy. It's very uh, hashtag explore earth um, off the beaten track, something like that, which, you know, if, you, if that's what you're going for, then great. Um, I think it's made a huge difference and it hasn't taken us all that long. Um, as I say, we have taken out those, those signs. Let me know what you think about removing those signs. Personally, I mean, it makes a big difference to the scene, no question. It looks better, but um, it is it is it ethical? Those are man those are man-made signs that they've put there. So I could very easily argue, well, you know, they shouldn't be there. It's a it's a man-made sign, but they are permanently there. You know, I wouldn't take out a building, a rock, a, a, oh, I don't know. We could keep going around in circles. Please let me know your thoughts, uh, either in the live chat or in the comments below. We'll see what it's going for. Um, so I'm going to leave it there because we are we're now at 20 past eight. I have been going for a long time. There is uh, a, a good amount of you still here. Thank you so much for uh, for for joining me. Um, Shy Violet says on this, were you concerned with passing cars when taking this picture? No, it, this was a, a very very quiet uh, stretch of road. I think. Um, we were in a camper van uh, at this point and we parked at the side of a road for probably about 20 minutes and nothing passed us. Uh, we were sort of snaking our way through the Dolomites. We were off season. It was very quiet, um, which was great. Um, so yeah, it was uh, be a beautiful place to be. Uh, Matt says, I think the signs detract from the picture. They're not the focus of the piece after all, um, which is uh, which is a accurate. Yeah, they do, they do detract, but Again, there is that element of, of honesty of, of taking out something which if someone were to go now to this road, stand there and take the same picture, those signs would be there. So, you know, I think I think there is an element of, of having to be honest about um, what you've taken out. Uh, you know, someone will go looking for a picture and if you've messed around with things too much. Crucially, the mountain, for example, was there, and I have seen many photographers, many Instagrammers that will take a, a shot of a road like this, snaking away into things, and they will Photoshop in the mountain. They will they will take a scene and, and put things like that in there, um, uh, just to make it look epic and adventurous. And a lot of them will, you know, at least put hashtag composite. Some of them sadly don't and some of them have been stung a little bit and have been called out for you've made a completely fake image um, and haven't been honest about what you've done so uh, yeah I, I tend to uh, on the side of caution and certainly anything I'm doing for editorial purposes you have to be completely honest uh, it would be it would be um, very bad form to uh, editorially put shots in that had been heavily manipulated um, signs maybe wouldn't be a problem but certainly in the example of like putting in a mountain no absolutely not uh, so yeah hopefully that's been that's been helpful the, the point of this really was to, not to show you exactly how to edit uh, this sort of photo but more to show the sort of things you could do uh, to your older photos to encourage you maybe to have a look through your older galleries see what old gems you maybe look at and think oh yeah that was a nice shot that was a nice yeah, it was a really nice day i loved getting that photo and maybe you can spend five ten minutes in in putting some of these things certainly some of the the local adjustments seeing how you can give it a little bit more life a little bit more vibe um i'm going to call it a day here if you have enjoyed the stream those of you who have already been in there do please hit the like button um, if you don't already subscribe to the channel uh, please do it would be a huge huge uh, benefit um, certainly now uh, lockdown restrictions are easing I'm going to be getting out into the field a lot more doing uh, more landscape stuff hopefully doing some more wildlife um, some really really great stuff that I've got planned um, I've just been waiting for lockdown to ease and I can go out and do some really really great stuff so um, if you are a fan of my photography, if you are um, if you are a fan of, of what you've seen on here so far, please subscribe, join in, let me know more of what you would like to see. Um, do you like seeing the landscapes? Um, for my next live stream, I think I'm uh, I've been debating uh, doing a very um, uh, like high end product photography 
retouch. I did a shot of a watch recently, and the retouching on high-end product photography is very uh, is very all about that fine detail. It's very in depth, very elaborate. Um, so editing that one image would probably take me a couple of hours. So um, if that would be of interest for a live stream, let me know, and I could take you through exactly that process of how like commercial level re retouching is done, um, or at least how I would do commercial level retouching. Again, there are many better photographers and photoshoppers than I am. Uh, but that does bring me to an end. Thank you so much uh, for joining. Thank you to everyone who's been in the chat. Really is uh, brilliant to have uh, so many people following along. Um, uh, and do please follow along for the next streams. We'll try and make them fun and interesting. Uh, but for now, I'm calling it a day. And I'm really hoping that when I press the number five, it's going to end the stream. Thanks.